Your focus is off. I can't do it, Grandfather. I know what is expected of me. I'm just a shepherd. I'm going to tell you a story about hope, about trust, about faith, when we don't understand God's plan. It was the time of the judges. The people were corrupt and everyone did as they saw fit. When a great famine came upon Israel, some families chose to escape their plight and start over in the pagan country of Moab. But soon, Moab proved to be none the better. The crops withered and the people suffered, for there was no rain. I miss you. last night. I awoke with a song in my heart. A song only God could have put there. <laughs> a song that reminded me of you, Elimelech. For so long I thought I would never find peace again. But God has given me that peace to handle the memories of you. I love you, husband. God, thank you for that song. Thank you for that comfort. I now ask that you give that same comfort to my family. Nothing grows here anymore. My sons work day and night in the field and still. Nothing. We are all so hungry, but we will not give up. You have healed my heart. I know you can heal our land. Please heal our land. <sighs> How did you get here? Thank you, God, for allowing something so beautiful to grow in such a place. Naomi, come quick. It's Killian. Must be a dream. It's no dream, mother. This town's put a curse on this family. Mama, what happened? He 
fainting. His head fell against the well. He'd been working out in the fields all day and night with nothing to eat. <laughs> Oh, oh God, why have you allowed this to happen? <laughs> Never should have come to this country. <laughs> Father should have kept us in Bethlehem. Doesn't it? Sometimes you just need a change of scenery. Just to step back from your troubles. Mm. I'd hoped Orca would come out today as well. It's been ten months since Killian passed. Can't seem to get her out of the house. We all grieve in the different ways. Why did you put that back? Mm. Wishful thinking. We don't have enough to spend. We have enough, Ruth. Get what you want. We cannot. Ruth. Choose what's best for you. What do you think of this? It doesn't matter what I think. Get what you want. <laughs> All right. Take that one. It brings out your eyes. <laughs> Praise be the gods, Naomi. What are you doing out today? Oh, Beth. I thought we both needed a smile today. Well, a woman in your situation should not be out in the town. If I had lost my husband and my eldest son, I would be at the temple praying to the gods. My god does not reside in the temple. Resides in my heart. I hear your crops are rather small again this year. <laughs> and I certainly hope that nothing happens to Milan as well. Otherwise, how do you intend to provide for my daughter? God will provide. I hope so. After all, I can't imagine her alone and desolate in this world with no husband. Come. Dinner won't make itself. Perhaps your God will make it. Perhaps I should start making sacrifices to the gods. Our fields will not prosper simply because they are washed in blood. Melon works in the fields and nothing grows. Look in the fields where Moloch stands. Moloch? nor any of the other gods of Moab is the answer. Then why haven't you been blessed in this place? I have been blessed, for my son found you. Side, mother. I will be done shortly. You look weak. You need rest. My strength is fine. It is the field that is weak. Let it be for now. God will take care of it. Is that what you told Killian? He will take care of this. God will never give us any more than we can handle. Then where is he? I work 
hard. And I am good to my family, just like Father. What more does God require for us to be blessed? All he asks for is our trust. Trust? Mother, how do you trust when you can't even see who's leading you? What if the people of Moab are right? What if we are following the wrong God? Oh, no, he is real, Malon. Our God is not this God that you speak of. He is real. Malon, you must keep your faith. I'm telling you, this family is cursed. Shh. You don't want Mother to hear you say that. Naomi is not my mother. I told her once Killian died, she could stop calling me daughter. I'm going back to live with my family. You're just going to leave? You forget. We have obligations to Naomi. We are her family. I have no obligations anymore. Naomi and the Israelites do not believe as we believe. That is why this family is cursed. Naomi has been good to us. My parents never should have arranged this. It was a mistake to marry an Israelite. Naomi would do anything for you. Ruth. I'm realizing that I no longer want what she has to give. Orpah, it is our duty to be good to her. We are her daughters through marriage. It's not only the right thing to do, it's the custom. It's law. Do not lecture me about the laws of Moab. I don't see you making any sacrifices to the, appease the gods. All she wants is our love and support, not rituals. As long as we're under her roof, we should not be making sacrifices. And I will no longer be under her roof. I'm going back to what I believe. Isn't there a part of you that believes something beyond our gods? Something better? Where's Milan? Hmm. He is still working. Perhaps you can go and talk to him. Come inside and eat with us. Ruth, I must finish this. Melon, please. <laughs> One more thing's changed for this family. Soon. It'll only be hard for a season. When will the season end? I'm beginning to think your people are right when they say our family's being punished. I do not believe people who slay the innocent to please the gods have a right to choose who should be punished. I do not know what to do anymore. You could always become a temple maiden. No. I don't want you to have any part of that. Neither do I. But I have to believe it all will work out. You sound just like my mother. Come inside. The field can wait. Your dinner cannot.
Oh God, why? Why did you not take me? Why am I the only one left? I swear there was no priest, and at a funeral. <laughs> no wonder she's lost her entire family. She's angered the gods. Oh, Orpa, come here. Come. She can tell you all about that woman. She was her other daughter. Hello, Beth. <laughs> your poor parents. But they must be just as distraught as I am about arranging you into that family. <laughs> Why, the only good thing to come of is that neither you nor Ruth ever conceived. Someday I plan to remarry. Well, of course you will. <laughs> but two barren daughters in one household? <laughs> Why, I hope Naomi at least learns from this and tries to make peace with the gods. Mother! Ruth. Your husband has left you empty handed And neither of you have any children to support you. If that isn't a curse, then what is? Stop it, mother. May I speak, Beth? Of course, Naomi. Ruth held her tongue out of respect for you as her mother. But you are not my mother, and I will not allow you to dishonor my family or my God with your words. If you have no kind words, then please be silent. I pray you all have a blessed day. because I was supposed to. I knew we were not supposed to come here. But why did you take my children? It was my fault. Why did you take my babies? I do not understand. Yes, I'm, I'm fine. I, I'm, I'll be there in a minute. Naomi, spouse of Elimelech, of the house of Bethlehem. I am... I am... I am Caleb, a servant of your friend Tani. She wishes to offer you condolences for the loss of your sons. She would have sent me earlier, but she did not get word until a few days ago. Tell her I said thank you and that I wish her well. I will do as you ask. Would you come inside? We've prepared food. Oh, I... I wish I could stay. But I have to be on my way. Caleb, how is Tawny? She is quite well. The famine is over. God has delivered us and healed our land. It is truly miraculous. That is wonderful news. 
tell her I appreciate her comfort. Go with God, Caleb. Thank you, Naomi. I will. Oh, thank you, Lord, for showing mercy to your people, even though they did not deserve it. So, is this what you call a sign of your God's mercy? That Israel's famine is over? Yes, Ruth. It is a sign of great mercy. Orpa, what's wrong? Are you... What is it, Orpa? I'm... Orpa, what is it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry for how the women treated you. But most importantly, I'm sorry that I did not stand by you. Oh, Orpa, it is all right. And you are not my servant. You do not need to kneel in front of me. You've been so good to me, even though I do not deserve it. You have a wonderful heart, Orpa. A wonderful heart. I may not have always shown you love, but I will. I vow to be forever obedient to you. You do not need to vow anything to me. My love is with you always. Now, enough talk of regret. I'm hungry. Come, let us sit and eat. I could not believe the way my mother acted. Ruth, I have never seen you so angry before. <laughs> you should have seen your face. <laughs> it was so, so... The opposite of beautiful? Yes! food and bless my two beautiful daughters. Amen. Tomorrow I will be leaving. I feel that God is telling me to go home. The famine in Israel is over. And I will go home to find peace. I agree. A fresh start in the new town. Oh, Ruth, you have gone way beyond what is expected of you. When I enter my homeland, the bonds and laws made here will no longer apply. I cannot expect you to go with me. Of course I will go with you. We will go with you. No. You will stay because you will find support here. And I will go to Bethlehem to seek mine. We are family, and we will leave as family. No, Ruth. I can't. But mother, we need to be with you. what Bethlehem's like, Naomi. Naomi? Is something troubling you? No. This is not fair. I cannot do this. You can do this. We will help you all. 
no, I cannot do this. Do not follow me any further. Go home to your real mothers. No, no, I will not. Coming with me to Bethlehem, there's no future for you there. I will be all right. This is my burden, mine alone. I will be all right. Go back to your families and start over. Mother! Ruth, I am not your mother. But you have cared for me in ways she never has. I love you. Look at me. I have nothing more to give you. My sons are dead. There will be no more children. No one to support you. And if by some miracle I were able to bear children again, more sons, when it is time to marry again, would you have waited? I will wait. I will wait forever. That is you talking, and I will not take that from you. You have a chance to marry again here. I need to return to Bethlehem to seek the Lord's favor, for I know his hand has been put against me. I will be all right. You do not need to take care of me anymore. You are truly the one who is kind. What you have given me will stay with me forever. She's allowing us to move on. She's alone. She's lost everything. She says she doesn't need your help. She says need, but she means want. And although she may not want my help, she does need it. She will not live much longer if she continues by herself, alone. And neither will you going off to a strange land. I must do what I feel is right. What will I tell Beth, your mother? Tell her I am with Naomi. Tell her I am no longer empty-handed.
was long and wore down the two women. Their fortunes forgotten, they were now penniless as they entered their new home and witnessed the wonders of the bounty in Israel. It's been so long since I've seen someone with so much wheat. Do you think your fields will prove to yield as much? No. When we left, there was no one to tend them. They must be barren by now. Therefore, we will have to go into another man's field and glean what is left. to your home. I'll stop and buy some food and, and, and cook you a meal. I'll help you. We'll make it beautiful. Oh, I have missed you. I prayed for years that you would return. Oh, Naomi, when I heard of your loss, I was so devastated. I, I, I instantly, I, I, I called a messenger and, and had him go to find you. Oh, have, have some bread, have some bread, Naomi, please. I cannot imagine what you have been going through. I needed to find you to let you know that you would not be going through this alone. Oh, I see it. I see it. There is a smile. Oh, I long to hear your laugh again, Naomi. Your beautiful laugh, child. This woman has laughter that can light up the darkest night. Now we have have some more water. Stop. Stop saying my name. Stop calling me Naomi. It means pleasant, and I am far from that. I have lost everything. My name should be Mara. But the emptiness and bitterness can only describe what I am feeling in this moment. But you are home now. The Lord will show his favor on you. I should be, I should be leaving. I didn't mean... No, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm, I'm just so happy to have you back. And you too, Ruth.
Show us your mercy. If not for me, then for Ruth. Well, good morning. You've changed. My dress was torn. It's time. Today, I will go to the fields to glean. No, Ruth. I thought that's what you called it. It is. I meant that it's my job. You cannot do that for me. No. You stay here and make your home. Let me do this for you. Very well. But please, be careful. First day. Yes. It's quite easy. Just watch me, you'll learn quickly. I am Ruth, daughter of Naomi. I'm Simeon, picker of the wheat. <laughs> <laughs> Man, look at all this wheat. God has really been good to us. Yes, he has. Just finished surveying fields here, and we think we're going to finish with more crops and ahead of schedule. That is glorious news. So, what would you have us do next? Sir, what would you have us do next? What? Uh, we're ahead of schedule. That's good. You all right, sir? Seth. Where's that woman over there? I, I have no idea. I don't have time to take the name of everyone. Especially the gleaners. What is wrong with him? What should I know? Benjamin, do you know the name of this woman? No, sir. Uh, Seth had me tending the grain all day, and my hands were kind of full. Sir, why are you so concerned with this woman, and a foreigner at that? Do any of my workers know the name of this woman? May I speak, sir? Yes, my friend. Her name is Ruth. Ruth. She's the daughter of Naomi. She's been working with me all day and has not stopped. If my services are through here, sir, I'd like to return to my work. Of course. Sir, you need to focus on the grain. I am tired of you questioning my decisions. You're relieved of your duties. But, sir... Leave. Now. 
I'll report this to Neb. Tell my uncle whatever you wish. You, sir. What's your name? They call me Simeon. Well, Simeon, congratulations. You've become my new chief harvester. Seems like you know more about my fields than my workers do. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. To you as well. Is it true that you're the daughter of Naomi? Yes, sir. You don't have to call me, sir. I'm not your master. My name is Boaz. Yes, sir. I mean Boaz. I don't want you to work anyone's fields but mine. You get the freedom to do whatever you need to do. Thank you. You must know that I'm not of your people. Why are you so good to me? I don't see people for who they're not. I see them for who they are. I know you've come here seeking protection under the wings of our Lord. I pray that he uses me for that purpose. Thank you. Sir, I wanted to apologize about today. Go eat, enjoy yourself. But why did you not release me? Because you're a good learner. And unlike others, you never make the same mistake twice. She's still there. Benjamin. Tomorrow, when we eat, I want you to go tell Ruth I want her to eat with us. Yes, sir. Take a drink. You look thirsty. <laughs> sir. Yes. I have just been released. Why? Because Boaz is distracted by some foreigner. Who is this foreigner? I have no idea. Some woman from Moab is related to someone named Naomi. Naomi is back? What would you like me to do? I will take care of it. You are true to your people. Ruth. Have you eaten yet? No, sir. I'd rather wait until I finish the work. Oh, you, you can finish later. Um, eat. Eat with us now. No, no, no. Come sit over here. Sit with me. I should be getting back to work. It's getting late. And I've not gathered nearly enough. Okay, wait. Before you go, before you go, I want you to take this. I want you to give this to Naomi. You tell her that this is a gift from Boaz. Thank you again. Benjamin, how much has she gleaned? 
Not much. Maybe enough for two people for a few days. I want you to take a few bushels and shake it out and put some grain out so she can collect it. If you don't mind me asking, why do you give her more when she doesn't ask for any? <laughs> I'm just following her example. Blessed. Who was kind enough to let you glean all this grain from their field? His name was Boaz. 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 He is a relative of Elimelech's. He was always such a kind child. He's still very kind. Look what he gave me, and even more. Help me sort the grain. <gasps> With their needs now being met, Ruth began to feel the pains of being alone, the reality of a stranger in a strange land. Now it feels like home. Yes, it does. Ruth, how is your heart? About Malon, I mean. Some days I'm busy and I forget. Some days he's all I ever think about. God has someone out there for you. He does not mean for you to be alone. But I'm a foreigner. No man in Bethlehem would want to marry me. Any man with half his wits would die to be with you. I don't believe I could provide him with a family. You're too young to say that. What about you? I can't get married and leave you behind. It's too soon. Now you say it's too soon. One day you will say it's too late. Maybe God can find a way to bless us together. Anything is possible where God is concerned. This area over here, we've got to make sure that there's fencing put around the entire area. Because these... Have you gone mad? What? I hear you are giving extra food to that foreigner. You know if you do that, you must give it to all the others. And you'll probably do it. She never takes any more than what is allotted by the law. And even then, she won't take Don't any... Don't waste your breath on him. This is not about the law. This is about treating a foreigner better than your own people. You tell Simeon to put together a bundle and to give it to Naomi. Tell her it is a gift from me. They'll have their food. She is bringing a curse upon us, the curse of death, the same curse that she did to her family. Whoa, whoa. Sir. Just because we're relatives, I do not have to tolerate this kind of behavior. One day you will need me and I will not be there. I have no mind. He knows nothing about anything. It's a fool. Don't ever allow yourself to be called a fool. I understand what you're trying to do, sir. Just, I beg you, be careful. Are you worried about me? Well, if I can speak freely, many of us are very concerned why you're going out of your way for this woman. Why is that so hard to understand? Love, sir. See? Love has never been part of your life. It's always been just work. The only thing that comes before it is God, and the only thing after it has been sleep, so... <laughs> Look, who said anything about love? I'm just wanting to find the right one. Well, a lot of good women have come and gone as you wait for the right one. Why settle for that which is good when you can have what's great? Okay, I'll remember that. I just pray that my good friend Boaz has the wisdom to know good from great when she's standing right in front of him. 
Now, excuse me, Mara. Oh, it's so good to see life come back into this place. Mm. And it's because of Ruth. <sighs> she is so good to you. All the mothers in the village are jealous. <laughs> <sighs> so in all these years, you've never married? No, but I'm at peace with that. I let uh, that idea drift away a very, very long time ago. <laughs> ah, you've done it again. What? Well, I came here to comfort you. And now you are thinking of me. You are my friend. It's the least I can do. <laughs> I know. I've seen how you and Ruth struggle from day to day. Why don't you sell this place? Go on. You can get a very good price for it right now. Mm. I've thought about it. But I feel that God is telling me to wait. I know, but you could sell it to... Naomi. Yes? Oh, you're home. Peace be with you. I am Simeon. My master Boaz has sent a gift for you and Ruth. Boaz is too kind. Come, eat with us. There's more than enough for two. Won't you stay? I... I, uh... must be moving on. May the Lord bless you. And you. It's good to see Simeon doing so well. You know him? Yes, yes. He's a kind man who fell on some hard times, but I hear the Lord has blessed him. Oh. oh. I'm out of water. Let's go to the well. It, the walk will do us both oh, good. Greetings again, ladies. Let me get that knife. Thank you, Simeon. You know, the Harvest Festival is tomorrow. Yes, I know. This is the first time I've ever been. Because now I'm a harvester. Well, I'm very pleased for your promotion. Thank you. Uh, Tani would love to go to the festival with you. I would like that. I would like that very much. We'll see you at the house. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you a thousand times for what you just did, I think. <laughs> I never thought that a man like that would be interested in me. God works miracles when you least expect them. Yes, he does, doesn't he? working all day and you seem to be the one out of breath. Ruth, what are you been up to? Come, sit down. We must talk. God has put something into my heart. The time is now. The time is now? Oh, mother. Please tell me you're not dying. No. No, I have not felt this good in years. It is time for you to move on. Oh, Mother, I cannot leave you. Shh, listen. The Harvest Festival is tonight. You must go. You know I'm not allowed there. You are not just a gleaner. Through me, you are kin. Which brings me to this. I believe God has shown me who you are to marry. I am from Moab. No one even looks at me. Oh, daughter, 
There is one who looks at you every day. Who? Boaz. He's a very kind man, but I'm not worthy of his love, and he could not be possibly interested in me. Oh, Ruth. Boaz has been waiting for someone like you, just as you have been waiting for someone like him. He can protect you and provide for you. You must let him know your true feelings tonight. But tonight is the Harvest Festival, and He'll be busy with the celebration. I assure you that when he sees you, he will stop and take notice. Look at me. I've been wearing the same clothes since we arrived. All he'll notice is how bad I look. Come, let me show you something. You have been so kind and loyal to me, even when you did not have to be. You deserve something that reflects the beauty that I see in you. It is the most beautiful dress I've ever seen. Perhaps you're right. Maybe Boaz will notice me. Mm. But there is more, and you will have to trust me. All right. Tonight, when you go to the festival, wait. You will surely want to run up to him, but do not. Just watch and wait until he's had plenty to eat and drink, and then follow him where he goes to rest. Wait until he falls asleep. Uncover his feet and lie down there. Mother, I trust you, but I cannot do that. Oh, Ruth, it is a custom of our people. Boaz will recognize the sign you are making and he will show you whether he agrees or not. What if he's not an honorable man? What if he tries to take advantage of me? If Boaz is the man of God I know him to be, he will only do what the law tells him to do. This plan seems so foolish. Trust me, God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. He will not let you be harmed. All right. I'll do it. <laughs> Good. We have little time. We must get you ready to go. That will be my last drink. Ah, uh, come on, you deserve it. <laughs> what about you? You having a good time? Oh, oh someone has caught your eye. Oh. You know, Seth used to always say that if women only want you if you have something to give. Seth, a lot of good that has done him. Very true. Look, you're a fine man. You're strong, you're courageous. You're you're more than any of these women would want. You think so? Yes. You just gotta have more confidence in yourself. And what have you got to lose? If she says no, <laughs> you're no worse off than you are now. All right. Yes, you're right. You're right. Come on.
Who's there? It is I, Ruth. Ruth? What are you doing here? Because you are kinsman, I approach you this night. You once asked, may the Lord protect me under the spread of his wings. Now, I ask the same of you. Did Naomi put you up to this? Yeah. <laughs> you are a faithful woman. Why me? Uh, of all the men you could have chosen, why me? Because your kindness is greater than I've ever known. You've shown me mercy when I've not deserved it. I will not choose another. You're the only one that can save our family. When I first saw you in the field, I knew you were special. I prayed and asked God that if it be his will that he would give me your love. The Lord made it so. I am not your closest kinsman. There's another. Uh, one who I have a, created a problem with. Uh, he would do anything he could despite me. Um, especially if it has anything to do with you. Who is this man that can hate you? Neb, mm. the brother of Elimelech. But this, this is something that I, I, I have, I've brought upon myself and I, I, I can fix this. It's my problem to solve and I will. You just have to trust me. You won't, you, you just need to sleep. You can sleep here. to leave before the sun comes up. People will think the wrong thing. <laughs> um. Since I've met you, you've always thought of me over yourself. Well, I think a woman ought to be treated with kindness. No matter where she's from, who she is. I really want to be with you, but I have to do it according to the law. I can't touch you. The law says I can. I'm going to work this out. Trust me. I need you to go and be with your mother. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. I want you to take this. Give this to Naomi. Tell her I 
said thank you. She'll understand. And the next day, Boaz sat, not eating or drinking, until God showed him how to be together with his one true love. should have seen it. He awoke and said, who is there? I said, it is I, Ruth. <laughs> and he, <laughs> and he, <gasps> oh, mother, he's an honorable man. Mm. You are right. Thank you for showing me the way. <sighs> there is a problem, though. There's a kinsman closer than Boaz. It is Neb. You knew? Yes. I could have made my life easier by selling the field and bringing Neb closer to me. But I did not want you in his mercy. Mm. And I knew Boaz would fight for you. <laughs> <laughs> he said he would do the right thing for us to sit and wait. Boaz will do his part, but we must do our part too. What else is there for us to do? Pray. Mm. Oh, Lord, I thank you with all my heart. I thank you for your mercy, for your grace, for a second chance. I want you to betray me. What? I want you to go to Neb. Tell him that I've just... I've lost my wits and my infatuation for Ruth, and I'm about to give her half of my grain. But, sir, this could ruin you. I mean, they could publicly ridicule you for showing favoritism. I know. It's love. For that, I would risk anything. All right. If you believe that, so do I. Neb, you are right. Boaz has lost his wits over that Moab woman. I mean, he has chosen to give half his grain to Ruth. I knew it. The son of Rahab is showing his true self. <laughs> Will you testify to this? Yes, I will. You are a wise man, Benjamin. I will see you rewarded. Thank you, sir. Now, we need to get the elders to the public square so that they may see the true Boaz. Is this true? This man will testify to this. You will swear to this? I give you my solemn oath. Neb, you've done a great service for your people. I will gather the elders to meet us here at the temple. Boaz, you are here. We have some concerns about your actions with the harvest. I have nothing to hide. You will not make light of this once you find out what I know about your intentions. Members of council, people of Israel, this man is a traitor. 
He plans to give half his grain to that woman from Moab. He is no longer one of us. If I were to do something like that, give away anything to a foreigner, I would expect to be stoned to death. Is this true, Boaz? Are you planning to do what he says? <sighs> Neb is right. I do plan on helping the widow, but by purchasing the land owned by Elimelech and by becoming her kinsman to save the house of Elimelech from destitution. You will not do that, that is my right. I am the closest relative. Elimelech's land and his wife are mine. Neb, you did not read the law carefully. It is not the widow of Elimelech that you redeem, but the wife of his son, the Moabitess named Ruth. No, 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 it is not so. It is not so. Neb, do you still intend to redeem the land and Ruth? I will not marry a woman from Moab. He will deal with her. As is the custom of our laws, remove your sandal and give it to Boaz. By the power of the council given by God, I name Boaz the kinsman redeemer of the house of Elimelech. But if you did not plan to give her half your grain, then that man is a liar. No, he did not lie. I do plan on giving half my bounty to Ruth. You see? But not the half that belongs to Israel. I want to give her my hand. If I plan to make her my wife. Ruth and Boaz were married shortly after, and a new hope began for Ruth and Naomi, which surely was a blessing from God. Their trust and faith in Him allowed blessings on their family they never thought possible. I came as soon as I heard. There's something really wrong with Ruth. I mean, she can't keep anything down that she eats. Boaz, I need for you to go outside. And, and get what? Nothing. Go pray. Pray? Pray. Waited all these years. I have done everything you want. I love her. This can't be happening. God, I would. I would. <laughs> Why are you laughing? What? What? My mother and father named me Obed, which means servant, and Naomi's life was fulfilled again through the love of something as small as a newborn child. Naomi loved and cared for me throughout her days as if I were her own. 
Thank you. I know you are here with me. I know you always have been. Oh, and Lord, thank you so much for little Obed. Protect him all of his days. And let this family continue to bless Israel. Think of your great-grandmother and Naomi. If they had not trusted God during the most difficult days of their lives, you and I would not be sitting here today. It is wonderful what God has done for our ancestors, but how I know you will do that for me. And just because some man came and told me that I'm going to be king and anointed my head with oil doesn't mean that I will be. He gave you the strength to fight a lion and a bear that were attacking your father's sheep. If he will help you to protect sheep, he will surely give you wisdom and strength to be king. Your father wants you to come home and bring lunch to your brothers. Go and do what the Lord says. David, you forgot this.